Hello everyone, thank you for joining us for 292 Baby Educational Videos, Support for Parents and Caregivers of Infants. I would like you to know that all of the experts featured in our video series have given freely of their time and all are from the early childhood community of Greater Rochester. On behalf of everyone affiliated with the 292 Baby Project, we wish you the very best of luck with your children. 292 Baby is a community collaboration administered by Monroe Community College. Every week we take a different theme, and this week's theme is on the four-month-old. And every day we take a different look at that theme, and today we're looking at motor development and really a, a whole gambit of things that are related to, uh, to the four-month-old. And to join us and lead our discussion or help with our discussion today, we have Carol Osborne. And Carol, we're really happy that you're with us today. And Carol is the Interim Executive Director of the Rochester Children's Nursery. And um, also, maybe more importantly, I think, is that you're the mom of six That's and the right. grandmother of eight. Yes. About to be the grandmother of 10, is yes. that right? Yes. You got twins coming? Is that what the. <laughs> no, a daughter in law and a daughter expected. Oh, okay, okay. Well, thanks for being with us. Um, we're talking the four month old, and I'm just, um, you know, one of the things I like about the show is it makes me think back to when my kids were that age, you know. And I still remember with my firstborn, um, for the first couple months, they were just, he was just kind of a lump, you know, and I was the dedicated dad, and I did everything right. But I noticed that right around four months when he could start interacting with me, I really did kind of fall in love with him. You know, and that whole, it took it to another whole level for me. That's right. This is the next stage of development. Between about three and six months, babies really become their own person. They begin to realize that they might be separate from you. Mm -hmm. They'll raise their head up and their neck muscles are getting a lot stronger so that they can look around and see a lot more of their world. Mm -hmm. They're also reaching and grasping. So we must always remember to be careful about mm -hmm. what we leave near a baby yeah. because they are now able to use their fine motor skills a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Babies typically develop from the head to the toe and from the outside in. Mm -hmm. Do you know what that means? Okay. Um, no. Well, actually, it's, it's pretty logical. It means that babies are stronger with their heads at first. Mm -hmm. That's the part of their body that's developing. They move their heads, mm -hmm. and then they begin to move their arms in and in, in, out, and their hands begin to open up. You know how when your little ones, you said they were a lump, and they yeah, kind sure. of had those fist, mm -hmm. tight fists? Now they can start to open up their hands, and their fine motor skills begin to develop. So that's what we talk about the inside out. They've developed their chest muscles, and they're able to move their upper body. Now they can start moving their arms, their hands, their fingers, mm -hmm. much more easily. So those muscles, they're just not developed in the first couple months? They're not fully developed. Mm -hmm. Just as the inside workings of your baby, they're, they're not fully developed in their, their stomachs and their, their organs, and especially their spine. So we want to be really careful how we hold the baby and support their neck. But at four months, this baby is getting pretty independent. Some mm -hmm. of them even look like they're doing sit-ups when they're mm -hmm. in their, their little carriers. Yeah. I, it, it was. If I, if, you, if I looked at my babies on the day they were born and then could zoom up to four months, just in that, what is that, 100 days, 120 days, the difference was just stunning to me. It is stunning. Every day is stunning. Yeah. If you play with your baby every day, you're going to see the growth really progress. And you're going to notice that yesterday maybe your baby didn't track his or her rattle. But today you can hold a rattle in front of the baby's eyes. And as you move the rattle, the baby will look in the direction that the rattle's going. Mm -hmm. Or perhaps when you talk with your baby right in front of their face, you notice that when you went to the other side of the room, they didn't look for you. But now as you talk and you move behind the baby, they're going to start turning their head in the direction of where the sound is coming from. Mm -hmm. I think if I'm remembering right, of course my memory is not as what it used to be, but I seem to remember that that's when they would actually start laughing too. Would that be right when I could interact and I could do those things and he'd, of course, as soon as my kids would do anything that I could get them laughing, I would do it over and over again. That's right. You like to hear a baby laugh, you know. Makes you feel good. Yes, too. it did. It did. Yes, they do start laughing out loud. Mm -hmm. They smile almost from day one. Mm -hmm. We know they do. And some people will say, oh, it's only gas. But I think babies <laughs> are truly responding to mm -hmm. your tone of voice. They yeah. not only respond to our words, but to our tonality. Mm -hmm. So if we're upset, they sense that. Mm -hmm. If we're happy, they sense that. Mm -hmm. And I think that Chuck that they, they begin to get, their bodies become more sensitive, so they begin to get a little ticklish in mm -hmm. spots, yeah. and they do laugh out yeah. loud. I can remember, and I thought this was a fluke, 
that um, an hour after my daughter was born, this is my second child, and I and I got to hold her right away. And you know, she had the little hat on; her head looked like a little uh -huh. football, you know. And uh, um, she was sitting on my lap. I had her tucked right in here, and my mom snapped a picture. And just as she snapped the picture, my daughter smiled. So I have a picture of my daughter smiling at one hour old, you know, sitting in my lap. It's just precious sitting on, sitting on the desk. Yeah, you know, she great. still loves to be photographed, I bet. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I can't say too much about her on TV because, you, Dad, don't say those things. That's right. You know? <laughs> but I love the photograph her whether she likes it or not. Um, but at four months, you know, you were talking about um, um, they can sense whether or not you're upset. Can we go with that for a little bit? Um, yes. Uh, it's important to, to talk about that because yeah. I know that parents, especially new parents, you've never done this before. Mm -hmm. Your number one baby is like your experimental baby. You're not sure how to react to that child. And when a baby gets tense and upset, we tend to get tense and upset. Mm -hmm. If we can consciously help ourselves to take a deep breath, and we know when we do deep breathing, oxygen is renewed to the brain and we kind of can have more control of ourselves. Mm -hmm. If we can calm down, the baby begins to calm down. They're very, very intuitive, especially yeah. to their parents' feelings. Yeah. I wonder if it's more what they see. I'm thinking of how would they sense it? You know, um, if, if, do they see the look on your face or do they, they feel you tightening up? They feel it. If you, you could do a little test with your spouse or with a friend, have someone hold you and just begin to breathe deeply. Mm -hmm. And you'll be, feel your body start to relax. Mm -hmm. And this is exactly what the baby feels. Mm -hmm. If you're breathing deeply and you're relaxing and you're holding the baby securely, mm -hmm. they're going to feel that. And they're going to know everything's going to be okay, even if my tummy still hurts yeah. or yeah. even if I want my bottle right now and it's still warming up. Yeah. They, they're they're going to get a sense of security. Mm -hmm. And you want them to feel that? Absolutely. Yeah. Babies are in a stage that we call, this is an emotional stage defined by Erickson, the psychologist, that we call trust versus mistrust. Mm -hmm. So if we respond to a baby appropriately and meet their needs, then they're going to learn to trust. If we let a baby cry things out and we don't respond in an appropriate amount of time, they're going to learn a sense of mistrust. Mm -hmm. And it's logical that we want them to learn a sense of trust. Sure. You know, in my college classes, now I teach communication skills and mm -hmm. um, couples and, and, of course, anything in a relationship with someone, trust is a key issue. And I know that trust, which is what fascinates me about the relationship with an infant because of its uniqueness, but in any relationship, trust is it. Well, one of the exercises we do is I have the students write down their definition of trust. And it's a hard word to define. Yes. You know, like, uh, um, what is trust? If you want your baby to trust you, what does that mean? That's right. And I, I think it is hard to define. I look at it as security. Mm -hmm. I know that someone will be there for me when I need them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean I'm dependent on someone for my entire life. Mm -hmm. But it means not only can I trust myself, but I can trust another person. Mm -hmm. And then that builds up independence and what we call empathy, mm -hmm. understanding of other people's feelings. Yeah. And now empathy is another one of those words that just has a lot of different, uh, um, and there are people who claim to be empaths. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if it's possible to actually be an empath, but the person who says that they are, they would be, if I were saying that I was an empath, it means that I could feel your feelings and know your thoughts. You know, but the idea of empathy more is that I would just, or at least how I understand it, that I would, I would, I would respond to your feelings and have a sense of what you were feeling, not that I would actually feel your feelings. That's right. We don't necessarily have to agree with the feeling. If our baby wakes up at 2 o'clock in the morning and wants to play, mm -hmm. we don't have to say, yes, I want to play too. Yeah, I can yeah. understand that 2 o'clock is a great time to play. Yeah. No, it's, it's I understand you're in a playful mood, yeah. and I understand it's hard for you to sleep right now, yeah. and I'm going to do everything I can to soothe you because I need to sleep. Yeah. It's just understanding that the baby is not being naughty or the baby isn't trying to control you. Mm -hmm. It's just that this is what it is at this point. This yeah. is what your baby's feeling, happiness and playfulness. Yeah. You know, um, do you remember the show Star Trek? Yeah, yes, Mr. I do. Mr. Spock. <laughs> do you remember Mr. Spock? <laughs> yes. Now, he was half Vulcan and half human, and he had on his Vulcan side the ability to do something called the Vulcan mind meld, and he would put uh -huh. his hands right on somebody's head, and their entire experience would flow into him. So that if I could do the Vulcan mind meld with you, 
I would know what it's like to be Carol Osborne. I'd know everything that you know about uh -oh. being Carol, you know, right? <laughs> which raises the question if you could ever do that, would you let somebody? But for me, that was always the, a great example of what empathy is. is to, I mean, you could never get to that level of it where you'd know exactly, but it's the idea of attempting that. And yes. if a parent is trying to attempt to understand how their baby's feelings, does that have a good effect on the child? I think it has a good effect on the child and on the parent because you're not going to be so frustrated and think, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. But if we say the baby's awake at 2 o'clock to 3 o'clock every night, and then we go back and think, well, this baby is sleeping in the morning and in the afternoon and mm -hmm. at dinner time. Mm -hmm. Well, they need a playful time and an awake time. Mm -hmm. We just have to have have to, excuse me, have to help them to adjust that time back a little bit. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's at 10 o'clock just yep. before they take their five hour long stretch of sleep. Yeah. And that's often very difficult to do. And yes, it is. Personal <laughs> experience. My son had day and night mixed up for seven months, and no matter what, his first seven months, we were just reversed. He was up at night and he was sleeping during the day, and we could not change it. And one day, he slept through the night and it was totally reversed and then we were fine. It you does know. happen, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 for most children. Yeah. Some children go for very long stretches in their development when they really uh, have difficulty self-regulating, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to sleep. And then there's all kinds of coping skills that we can help them to learn. Mm -hmm. One nice thing with a four-month-old is that they are grasping things. So what Dr. Brazelton calls a lovey is a nice thing to have for your baby. A little piece of cloth with maybe a silky binding mm -hmm. that they can feel and touch and if you keep it close to you when you're nursing or feeding the baby mm -hmm. then the, that's going to have your scent and they're going to feel very comfortable and be able to soothe themselves back to sleep mm -hmm. without having you pick them up every yeah. time they cry. Yeah. Okay. We're going to go to a break here in just a minute but just before break we left off talking about security and um, lovies and it reminded me that my daughter and I think it was actually a little maybe before four months mm -hmm. but you were talking about self-regulating and that means to me that the child can calm themselves down. And she discovered her finger, you know, and it started when she was nursing and she just grabbed my, my wife's hair and then when she got done nursing the finger would be, and she could pacify herself, I guess, any time. Any thoughts? Yes, it shows that her stage of development was exactly right for this age. It's called sensory motor stage. Okay. So she is not only going through her emotional stage of trust versus mistrust, learning to self-regulate and mm -hmm. know that even if mommy and daddy aren't there, I can comfort myself. She's also going through that sensory motor stage where she's feeling everything, tasting everything, learning through her senses. Mm -hmm. So that's why that lovey is so important. Mm -hmm. it's, it's soft and it's comforting and being able to kind of soothe herself with um, the, the oral motor sensation mm -hmm. of sucking on her own finger. Okay. Now, when you say the senses, sensory, it comes from the word senses, so we're talking touch, taste, smell, feel, and hear. Yes. All of those. All of and those. motor is the, the muscles. Absolutely. So we put the senses together with the muscles and we, what is it? A sensory motor stage. Sensory motor stage. Okay. So a baby often will need that, that sucking reflex. So they're using their muscles and they're also sensing the feel mm -hmm. and that's comforting to them. Mm -hmm. So if they don't find their finger or they don't like their finger, mm -hmm. it's certainly okay to use a pacifier. Some people have a concern about that mm -hmm. because they think that the baby will never let go of that pacifier. Yeah. Appropriate. Um, control over that by the parent is perfectly all right. So the baby might need it if you notice they're, they're sucking and it's not time to nurse. You might use it at that time mm -hmm. or to comfort themselves to sleep. But it's not something they have to have in their mouth all day long because they want to talk to you. Yeah. Okay. You know they're beginning to talk. Yeah. They're beginning to say e and ah and oo and imitate your sounds mm -hmm. and your face facial expressions. Mm -hmm. I know with my son, and this is still on that um, uh, self-regulation, uh -huh. he didn't, he, we gave him a pacifier. And my daughter was able to, whenever she wanted to, immediately, but he had to almost ask for the pacifier, you know what I mean? Yes. And so it was that, that additional step that uh, maybe a, bit, maybe a little frustrating for him, I don't know, he didn't get it as immediately as she did. And she seemed to be much more relaxed with it. Yes, well, with a finger, they can always find it. Sometimes with the pacifier, it's in the crib, but they can't find oh, yeah. it when they wake up. Yeah. So mom or dad has to get up and help them to find it. Yeah. In, in any case, the sucking reflex is very important, and I wouldn't discourage it. No. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. um, 
Where do we go from here now? We got um, empathy, clearly an important thing, and interacting mm -hmm. with your baby shows that you're trying to understand, and that, that is the, um, 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 helps develop empathy in them, too, their ability. That's right, it does. The baby is not always going to be the one getting all the attention all the time as they grow a little bit older. Mm -hmm. So they have to learn to understand other people's feelings, and they'll do that through you understanding them. Mm -hmm. And a baby really cannot be spoiled before they're six mm -hmm. months old. It, I've they, heard that. I've heard you can spoil <laughs> them. But you... Well, they may get used to a routine that they like very much, yeah. but certainly they're not manipulative. Mm -hmm. So I look at that as, as what spoiling means, someone who manipulating the situation. Very often parents can get spoiled mm -hmm. because it's easier sometimes uh, to give in to certain demands than it is to teach coping skills. Mm -hmm. So teaching coping skills would be using a lovey so that the child can fall back to sleep on their own, mm -hmm. playing with the child when they're not demanding that you play with them. So for instance, the baby may be perfectly happy but make eye contact with you. Your baby's saying, I want to play right now. Mm -hmm. So put them on a blanket yeah. and do pat a cake or do peek-a-boo do those interactive games where they know they they're getting attention mm -hmm. without having to cry for it okay. we have a call wonderful uh, yeah, so yes it is so let's go let's go to our caller hello hi uh, who is this my name is lisa hi lisa thanks for calling parent talk are you welcome i have a question for you sure Like a what kind of a toy? What kind of a toy? Okay, all right, great question. That is a great question because babies are really in the next stage of development where we talked about they're able to grasp things and reach for things. So any kind of a toy that they can hold and really manipulate that's not too heavy. They like things like, there's one that I gave my granddaughter that she just loved. I think it was called a floppy fellow. It was a little doll that looked like a clown, but it had various textures on it. So again, we're looking at that sensory motor stage where they can feel it was very safe. You don't want to give the baby anything that has parts that could come off of it that they could chew off because it's definitely going to go in their mouth. Also things like a mirror. A baby safe mirror is wonderful. They love to look at themselves. They may not know it's them. They might think that it's another baby and then that's company for them. Um, mobiles are wonderful because now they can start to look at a, a distance further than from the mother's arm to the mother's eyes. And they can begin to move around a, a lot easier and follow things that are moving. So that would be a nice toy. Anything musical. Remember, they're in tune to, to sounds, but things that are not too complicated. You don't want something where they're pushing buttons. They're not able to do that yet. But certainly a soft toy, a toy that is light enough for them to hold in their hands, something that's movable so that it keeps them occupied, and again, a mirror where they can really see themselves and they won't feel so isolated. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks. Thank you for calling. Can I ask another question? Sure. Um, where would you get something like a sloppy fellow? Well, I look to the um, early learning stores. There are children's toy stores that cater to uh, babies, and there's a lot of um, Lamaze toys out now that they're black and white and red. I think you've probably seen them in the stores. Yes, I have. And, yes. and they have those. So I don't want to plug any particular store, yes. but I know there are toy stores in our area that have uh, play school toys and, and things like that that cater to children birth to three years old. And what do I need to look for in terms of safety? You need to look for things that are non-toxic, that do not have small parts attached to them, and are all one piece. And particularly a doll or a toy like that that might have bead eyes or glass eyes, you would not want to purchase that for a baby. Painted on eyes or embroidered eyes would be better, as long as it's all non-toxic. 
And would that be written right on the label? Yes, they are. That's the nice thing about toys today. You can see on the package where it says not recommended for children under three. And usually they will have an, an age annotation, say a toy that's good for a child birth to three months or three to six months. And you can trust that. It's right on. Okay, well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thanks for calling. Have a great day. You too, thanks. You too. Bye-bye. Bye. Um, good questions. You know, I mean, yes. I think um, a lot of times trying to find a toy that is appropriate for a particular age, like giving a G.I. Joe to a three-month-old is probably <laughs> just not a good idea. And they'll grab it from an older brother yes, yes. <laughs> if they see that. Yeah. The um, one thing I didn't mention were books and that's very important. Mm -hmm. Right from birth, we can read to children, and now books come in cloth, they come in plastic, mm -hmm. they can go in the bathtub. Mm -hmm. Very simple pictures and simple words mm -hmm. are the best for young babies. Yeah, and the babies probably don't even care if there are words, huh? What's, uh, if you get a book mm -hmm. with pictures. Absolutely. You know, and you were talking again, if I can just go back to what you said a few minutes ago uh -huh. about a uh, sensory motor thing. If it's all the senses, if you've got a book that you can see, so it's vision, but you know the kids are going to taste it, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, those little cardboard books good? The board books are great. Yeah. Some of them, you really have to be careful, some of them are less expensive and they're not as well made. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the paper can be chewed off very easily. So, so you don't want to leave a baby alone chewing mm -hmm. on a book. So only good for a few meals? Is that what this, uh, <laughs> right. Is, a, light, a light, a light meal. diet. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of times at four months, I, I remember with us, we, we just kept our baby inside the whole time. And I think just the first time anyways. Mm -hmm. And once we went outside and went places, at probably three or four months, we were saying to ourselves, why didn't we do this earlier? You know, what about taking a baby out at, at four months? Anything to keep in mind? Well, especially with the warm weather coming up, mm -hmm. the sun is something that you want to keep in mind. Yeah. You don't want a baby in the direct sunlight. And before six months, it's not recommended to put sunscreen on your babies. Mm -hmm. So you want to be sure your baby has a hat on, something that's not too warm, of course, mm -hmm. a little sun hat, and that their body might be covered with light clothing. And if it's very, very warm and their skin does need to be exposed because of the heat, keep them in a shaded area take a stroller that has a shade on it and I would say that taking them out is wonderful. Between the hours of 12 and 3 we know the sun is the hottest so maybe you want to refrain from spending a lot of time outdoors during that time mm -hmm. but certainly the air will help them to sleep better. Yeah, yes. yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah, I wish we had gone out earlier. And just, uh, um, but we've only got a couple minutes left, okay. and I just want to take this opportunity so that we don't run out of time to um, invite our viewing audience to join us next time, because next time we've got Michelle Prince, who is the former executive uh, director of the Rochester Children's Nursery, and she has a four-month-old at home. And we're going to be talking about um, um, more about some of the motor skills and uh, uh, those things with, with her. Um, and we're going to have Katie uh, Callery and her four-month-old son, Liam, on the show with us tomorrow. So going live is, is wild enough, but throw a four-month-old on there besides. And we are a daring group of people, I'll say <laughs> that. Um, okay, back to Carol Osborne and um, um, developmental things. This really is a whole developmental milestone, isn't it? Um, when you think of developmental stages, yes. when you hit four months, you're going into a whole new ballgame. Yes, your baby will start to raise his or her head up on his own and your baby will start to roll over mm -hmm. and also may sit up a little but the spine is not that strong so it wouldn't leave the baby alone. By about six months they're pretty strong and they can really start to sit up on their own. Put some pillows around them in case they wobble over because mm -hmm. they're floppy fellows themselves. Yeah. And also they will start to imitate sounds. That's a developmental stage mm -hmm. as well. We must remember that language is really important to all over development. Mm -hmm. A child who can understand and speak well also can perform well. Yeah. So, and then, then they can get their needs met. They're going to be reaching and grasping. Mm -hmm and they're going to try possibly to pull themselves up a little bit. So baby exercises are pretty nice to yep. do with your baby too. Yep. Very gentle ones. Okay, great. Well, Carol, thank you so much for joining us and just kind of introducing us into that whole four-month thing, which is just a fascinating, fascinating time. For me, it was anyways with, uh, with the kids. So, it is. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Amazing grace. Baby's brains don't grow by themselves. The sound but when you sing to your baby, 
Talk to your baby and play with your baby. His brain cells learn to grow. So sing to your baby. Talk to your baby. Play with your baby. Two Nine Two Baby is a community collaboration of many community partners, and it's administered by Monroe Community College. What you're seeing is a list of those who are supporting or have supported the efforts of Two Nine Two Baby to reach out to help support parents and caregivers of infants. We would like to thank each of these contributors for their own unique contribution to this effort.